Now let's solve the differential equation when the capacitor is being discharged. We're looking for Q as a function of time. And this is like having an algebraic equation involving Q and T. To solve for Q as a function of time, we have to separate the variables. So we need to move Q to one side and the T to the other side. First, we can rearrange the equation to get dQ dt. We can move this term to the other side, so that's what we have. And then we can divide by negative r on both sides, so we get dQ dt equals to negative 1 over rc times q. Now I can move the q to this side, and that will be 1 over q dQ, and uh, I'm going to keep the negative 1 over rc with the time when I move the dt to that side. I like to keep the negative 1 over rc with the time because I know in the end I'm going to get e to the negative t over rc, so this can be convenient. What next? This looks like it is begging you to put the integral sign on each side. When we integrate 1 over q, we get natural log q. And then on this side, we have negative 1 over rc, that is a constant coefficient, so we can leave it out. And then we'll be integrating 1 dt, and 1 is t to the 0th degree, so we will get t to the 1st degree. And then we have to multiply by 1 over 1 in the front. What next? We should put in the bounds or the limits for the integration. Let's say the switch goes from a to b at t equals to 0. So we would start at t equals to 0. And then goes to any moment t because we want the charge at any moment t. At the moment when the switch goes from a to b, the capacitor carries a charge. Let's say the charge is initial charge Qi. And then at the moment T, the charge on the capacitor is Q. So we can plug in the upper bound, natural log Q, minus what we get when we plug in the lower bound, natural log Q initial. And on the other side, we have, we plug in the upper bound, that's a negative 1 over Rc times T, when we plug in the lower bound, we get zero, so that's it. Another way to go from there to here is to do the add constant instead of using bounds. I'm going to start with the natural log Q equals to negative 1 over RC times T. And I'm going to add the B to this side. And then we can use the boundary condition to find the B. What we know is that at t equals to 0, the q is the initial q, q sub i. So I will plug this in. Natural log q initial equals to t equals to 0, so this term is 0 equals to b. So we can substitute b with that. So this equation turns into natural log Q equals to negative 1 over RC times T plus the B, which is natural log QI. And then we can move this one to there. And then, of course, I'll get exactly the same thing. Natural log Q minus that equals to this. Natural log Q minus natural log QI is natural log Q. Q over QI. And this equals to negative 1 over RC times T. What next? We're looking for Q as a function of time. So what we can do is to do E to the this power and then E to that power. E to the natural log X is X. So on this side, we get Q over QI. On the other side, we get E to the negative T over RC. 
To find Q, we just have to multiply by QI on both sides. So the charge as a function of time is the initial charge times the exponential decay. To find the current as a function of time, we just have to do dq dt or negative dq dt. Depending on whether your discharging current is in the correct direction or not. During discharging, the charge on the capacitor is decreasing. So dq dt is a negative quantity. This negative sign makes it positive. So if you choose your discharging current in the actual discharging current direction, then you would have to make your I negative dq dt so the current is a positive quantity. So this is a negative. When we take the time derivative of this, the qi is a constant coefficient. So we can just leave the qi over here and then take the time derivative of this. So this is d e to the negative t over rc. Now we're supposed to have dt over here. But in order for us to use this equation, d e to the x dx equals to e to the x. These two, they have to look exactly the same. So we need to make this the same as that. So we have to use chain rule. So first we put the negative t over rc over here, and then we have to, in order to make these two sides equal, we have to multiply by d negative t over rc dt. So here we have negative q sub i times, now this part is d e to the x dx, so we get e to the x, e to the negative t over rc. And then for this part, we have negative 1 over rc, that's the constant coefficient, so we can keep it right there. And then we have dt dt, which is 1. The negative and the negative cancel, so we get Q initial divided by C divided by R times this exponential decay. This is Q over C, the Q initial over C. Q divided by C is the voltage across the capacitor. So this is the initial voltage across the capacitor. The initial voltage across the capacitor divided by the resistance gives us the initial current. So the current as a function of time is the initial current times the exponential decay e to the negative t over rc. So during discharging, both q and i are in the exponential decay format. It makes sense because uh, during discharging, the capacitor is going to lose charge and eventually it's going to lose all of its charges, which means that there will be no more discharging current at the end.